Imagine a world where you felt compelled to do what's good for you. I mean, we all know what we should do. We should eat well, we should exercise, we should get enough sleep. But then there's alcohol and the couch and Netflix. Consider if Netflix could help you want to do what's good for you, could inspire you to be healthier, empower you to be happier, could help you thrive more in your life. Well, it can. Who's been watching Netflix lately? You're not alone. Television and the internet are two of the most common ways that people access health and science information. And this means that entertainment platforms are really powerful tools to disseminate information. Currently though, health and science information have some common problems. It can be really boring and it can also be inaccurate. When I finished my studies, I had grand ideas about my work improving the world, helping people, having purpose. I mean, we all need purpose, right? To feel our efforts are worthwhile. But after my best efforts to do good work, publish in science journals, present at conferences, discuss my work with my colleagues, I realized that I didn't feel my work had purpose or meaning, not really because it wasn't leaving the academic and scientific community. And I knew it needed to do just that. So when a journalist reached out to me and wanted to write about my work looking at the impact of mindfulness on mental health, I was over the moon. But my excitement quickly turned to disappointment when I read the published piece. I had been misquoted. I felt that the message delivered was inaccurate and to put icing on the cake, my name was misspelled. But my bruised ego aside, what really sat poorly with me was that it was boring. I would be surprised if anybody after having read that piece felt compelled to try and practice meditation to improve their mental health. On the other hand, the entertainment industry is the master of engagement. Artists are experts at holding our attention inspiring us, moving us. But what's presented can be inaccurate and it's allowed to be. After all, it has artistic license. It's not science. But a little while ago, I was asked to consult on a script where the protagonist had mental illness. And it's a good thing I was because when I read the, the script, it was clear that what was presented there was a misrepresentation of mental illness and the experiences of people who live with it. And what I learned from this is that even if the entertainment industry want to make content that is accurate, that a pathway via which to do this is lacking. So often we end up with entertainment that spreads misinformation and promotes misrepresentation. And this is harmful. Consider if we could bridge this gap between art and science to create content that you can actually trust in the current climate of misinformation but delivered to you by artists to engage, inspire, entertain you. And here is where narrative enters our stage. Narratives are stories. We all know them. They contain plots, sequences of events. Rather than presenting information or arguments for audiences to judge as science may, Stories invite audiences into a world, into real or plausible life events. They bring us on a journey. Who's seen The Bold Type on Netflix? Well, for those of you who haven't, one of the characters, Jane, she's diagnosed with a BRCA gene. It's a gene which impacts her chances of being diagnosed with breast cancer. And she's forced to think about what having this gene means in terms of her life and also her health related decisions. And the creators of the bold type are by no means pioneers. The entertainment industry has at times worked with health and science experts to create accurate health related stories. So for example, in the 90s TV show, Beverly Hills 90210, one of the characters was also diagnosed with a BRCA gene and also had to face a series of health related decisions. These played out in the show. And when the episodes aired, 
Female viewers reported making appointments with their doctors to discuss breast cancer risk, talking about breast cancer and the BRCA gene with female friends, and also searching for more information online. And this isn't surprising because we know that narratives are far more effective than logical or scientific forms of information with regards to influencing our health-related behaviours. Narratives are easier to understand. They're easier to remember. And this is irrespective of how familiar or even actually interested we are in the content that's being delivered. Narrative is thought to represent our default state of thinking. We understand stories before we learn to read before we learn to write. It's what we were told as little children and it's what we tell our own children. So this benefit in comprehension has huge potential to increase access to health information, particularly for people who have limited self-confidence in their ability to understand health information or individuals with limited numeracy skills. So let me tell you one more story. In the TV show Dance Mums, the girls perform a dance routine to raise awareness for youth suicide and the suicide hotline. And when this show went to air, calls, texts and emails to the hotline skyrocketed. Some girls reported that watching the show saved their life. What this shows us is that the entertainment and content that we consume has a direct impact on our health. So my invitation to you is this. Next time you sit down and watch something, ask yourself, how does this influence me? And is this information that is influencing me actually accurate? Is it good for my well-being? Of course, entertainment does not need to be accurate. It does not need to improve our health. But given that it can, given that we can create content that we love to watch, that is factual and is good for our well-being, don't we deserve this? And don't we deserve to know the difference between the accurate and the inaccurate, or the reliable and the unreliable? We don't currently have a method that guides health science experts and the entertainment industry to create this content. And this results in huge missed potential to improve health. My health and yours. We need a method. And this is exactly what I'm doing, creating a roadmap for art and science to work together seamlessly. Entertainment created using this will be certified. So you know when you watch it, that the information presented is trustworthy to current knowledge. But more than that, it's going to be created using the best information we have about how to support people to change behaviours related to their health. So it will improve your life. Thank you.